This message was preached at the 2016 Naples Convocation with the theme Sound of Abundance of Rain between the 26th and 29th October at the Missy Training and Retreat Center along Mararabanvila Road, Kaduna. For further inquiries on this and other messages, please contact Refuge Media, number 19 Mayera Street, Navi Plaza, opposite Zidka Model Schools, Narai High Cost, Barnawa. Telephone numbers 0703-456-8035 or 0805-845-5719. Email preciousteam at yahoo.com. Website www.theplaceofrefuge.org. May your heart find help as you listen to Jesus' name. Father, our hands are lifted up to you. We are waiting. We are expecting. Revive our hearts today. Make the bright clouds and cause the rain to come upon us in this time of the latter rain. Every soul that is lifted before you this night Visit us deliberately. Do something deliberately in our lives. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the morning, we started looking at two legs. As the preamble for the sound of abundance of rain. And even though in the morning I did say to you, I was wishing that God would allow me to start with the second leg. But you don't take the second leg until you have taken the first leg. The first leg we did day with in the morning. Say, go and hide yourself. And I said, the hiding that precipitates, that saturates, and prepares a man for divine outbursts of the power of God. I will not be able to summarize what we did in the morning, much more because our time tonight is short. I'm trusting God that those of us that couldn't be here in the morning, you will grab the instructions that God began to give us and sit down with it. God is saying, to bear what is coming, you need to grow a root for it. Roots are not developed in the limelight. Roots are grown in obscurity, go and hide yourself. But this night, the same God that spoke to Elijah, go and hide yourself by the brook Cherith. The same God, after many days. So please turn with me to uh, second, First Kings 18 and we are going to read verse 1. 18 verse 1 Now it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying Go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send the rain upon the earth and Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab and there was a sore famine in Samaria. I want to stop there because I cannot go on tonight to go and deal with all the issues. We will be coming on that as the Lord will be helping us tomorrow. But tonight, go and show yourself. The showing that precedes 
revival. Go and show yourself. But now I want you to look at that passage very closely before we draw the issues. And it came to pass after many days. After many days of what? Eh? After many days of hiding. After many days of sitting alone. After many days of staying by the brook. And when the brook seemed to have dried, God moved him to another location with the widow of Sarephat of Sidon. Sidon is not in Israel. The widow of Sarephat was not an Israelite. But because God is needing to prepare his servant and set the appointed time for the manifestation, God said, go and hide yourself. After many days of hiding, after many days of shooting his roots, after many days of learning God's word, and after many days of staying in the secret place with God, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. There are a few words that we are going to deal with tonight, hoping that God will give us space and understanding that we can move on quickly. After many days, it came to pass after many days, that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year, saying, Go, show thyself unto Ahab, and I will send rain upon the earth. So many issues in that Bible verse that we are going to take little by little so as to lay a foundation for the outburst that we are expecting. Number one, after many days. What does that imply? Days of preparation does not mean that God has forgotten. Days of waiting and crying does not mean that God will not answer. Some people imagine that if God is going to give revival, all these years that we have been waiting, it should have happened. May I inform you, after many days, God rose up to walk. Can you imagine a man like Simeon? Simeon the priest who was waiting in the temple for years for the promise of the Messiah. That man was so old but he had entered into a covenant with God that he will not see death until he has seen the Lord Christ. After many days God honored his word. You remember the prophet, I mean the woman, the widow woman called Hannah, who also had been fasting and praying for many, many years. After many days, God, who can never fail to honor his word, he brought it to pass. Hallelujah. Let me note with you that the years of hiding, the years of waiting, the years of pleading with God may appear long, may be many days, but when God arises to walk, the years of travail suddenly get swallowed up in the years of manifestation. The years of hiding, the years of waiting, while we are waiting, it looks so long, it tarries, it appears as, oh, will this promise ever come? 
But may I say to you, after many days, God, who never fails to honor whatever he has said, he will rise again. Some people said, brother, all these years we have been talking about the move of God, the move of God, will it ever happen? We have seen God confirming his word. We have seen God doing things that he says he will do. Even though the outburst that we are waiting for is yet to finally arrive. But we are seeing signs and sound of abundance of rain. I want to assure you tonight, and it came to pass after many days. It will come to pass. God can never ask a man to seek him in vain. All of you that are waiting for God's visitation on your life, it shall come to pass. All of you that have decided that I will consecrate my heart, I will hold on to God, I will not compromise because God's promise to me will not fail, may I say to you, it shall come to pass. When you have entered into the shoes of men of old who believe God, who gave himself unto prayer and holding God's hand, they went through what several of us are going through. There were times that people will mock them and say, but you said God is coming. Where is he? But after many days, it came to pass. That's why we have their story to tell. But you see, when we are reading their story, just imagine that we read chapter 17 and quickly we came to chapter 18. To us, you will be thinking that that chapter 18 immediately is the next week. No, it was after many days. In the third year, years were rolling. And yet God was watching his time. God never fails to keep time. Are you hearing me? God never comes late. He has set time for certain things. The Bible says for everything under heaven, there is a time. And when the time for what God wants to do in any particular place comes, he will show up. So permit me to tell you tonight, it shall come to pass. What God has said concerning his visitation upon his church in our day, it shall come to pass. And if any of you had believed God, you have been holding God's hand and sincerely you are holding the truth of God's word, may I say to you with boldness tonight, it shall come to pass. Sometimes when you have stood holding God's hand for, for a divine visitation, the devil comes and says, now all these years that you have been believing God, where is it? Where is the promise of his coming? May I say quickly to you, regardless of what Satan has said, regardless of what mockers are saying, regardless of what unbelievers are saying, it shall come to pass. God has never in any situation put himself in a situation where he swallows his word. Every word that comes out of his mouth, there he is bound. God can never fail to honor his word. So heaven and earth may pass, but the word of God will not go unfulfilled. And it came to pass can you tell somebody by your side, and it shall come to pass. Some of the promises that God gave us several years ago, it didn't look possible. I remember I was talking to some young people many years ago. I said, God, we do this. God, we do this. God, we do this. One of the young men stood up and said, you are a daydreamer. 
And he told him, he said, no, 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 I don't want to be hearing the daydreaming of another man. I know what he's saying cannot happen. I thank God he has not died. And a few years ago, he stood up and said, I doubted. But my eyes have seen that God's word is true. It shall come to pass. Amen. Can you imagine that men of old, like Abraham, they believed God. Up to the time they were dying, the promise was not yet coming to pass, and yet they died in faith. Though they were dying, they were transferring the promise. Imagine that Abraham was dying, and he was only transferring not the land of Canaan, he was transferring what? The promise. He said, God said. And he said, this is your inheritance. Take the promise. It's good enough for you. After many days, it came to pass. After many days, it shall come to pass. So that's the first thing I want to say to you tonight. Have you ever stepped into believing God for divine visitation? It shall come to pass. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah. That is the next thing. You know, I began to speak in the morning. I said, when a man is told to go and hide himself, there are three levels at which the word of God comes to him. The word of God comes first to sanctify him, to cleanse him, to purge him, to set him free from his own internal depravity so that he can have internal strength and capacity to bear what God is about to do. The second level at which the word of God comes to such a man is the word for conviction, for commitment, and for persuasion. If you are not growing in your own personal conviction of what God is saying to you of the truth, you cannot stand for a long time. But then the third level is when the word of God comes as a message for commission. And so Elijah has come to that third point right now. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Permit me to spend a little time there. I want to say that for any sound of abundance of rain, every time God is about to move, and every genuine move of God is always by his word. If people are jumping up and they are shaking their body because they are very emotional or they are very excited or somebody has spoken something to them, I don't have any hope that that lasts because human emotion rises and falls. But if any move of God begins by the word of the Lord, you can be sure that the word of the Lord that endures forever we keep that move enduring. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah. When I come on that, I discover that all the men that God had used, the word of the Lord comes to them. Do you remember that the word of the Lord came to Moses when God said, Now I have come. To deliver my people out of the house of bondage. Go. And lead my people out. The word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. Unto Isaiah. As we read the story of John the Baptist in the morning. When we came to that chapter 3 of Luke. And in verse 2, as we are listening, 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 and we say, and the word of the Lord came to John in the wilderness. So let me quickly note two things before I go from there. That every time God 
is about to do what he says he wants to do. One of the immediate things that God begins to do, he sends his word to his people. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah. One of the things that gives me very great joy is that I see the word of the Lord coming, coming unto several men about what God is about to do. I see the word of the Lord coming unto leaders, coming unto bishops, coming unto pastors, to preachers, to disciples. Because it's about time for God to do what he says he will do. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah. Revival is never the presumptuous activity of a man. Genuine revival is not because somebody stands and says, let's begin to do something. Let's begin to do something. No. Revival is not the activity of a man. Revival, genuine revival, is only always occasion when the word of the Lord comes. And the word of the Lord came unto Elijah in the third year, saying, but now what is touching me this night is not that I want to spend time looking at the word of the Lord that came. I want to now look at what God is saying to several of us sitting here. If it were Elijah that God is speaking to, Elijah has come and gone. Am I right? And we are not going to have Elijah here again. So it's not about Elijah. That's why when we began in the morning, I began to remind you that God is speaking to someone here. I said, go and hide yourself. But now, I see the Lord at this threshold that the Holy Spirit is bringing out to. He said, go! Show yourself unto Ahab. And I will send rain upon the earth. Can we spend a bit of time looking at that scripture? Go! Show yourself unto Ahab. And I will send the rain upon the earth. Very, very serious word that I want God to help each one of you to catch before we cry to God together. When we are finished dealing with dealing with presumption, spurious standing and rising, human activity, when we have put all of that aside, And God has helped you to sit down where God has told you to hide yourself. There comes a point where God is speaking. And there are people here tonight. That they have come to the point where God is saying, Go and show yourself. Go and take your stand. Go! It is your time of manifestation. It is your time of showing. When God said, go and show yourself, it's different from flesh manifesting and showing. We are not talking about going to show. We are not, going to, we are not talking about going to, to display yourself. No. I'll tell you, What is the difference here? The difference here is that when God is saying to Elijah, go and show yourself. If I were to interpret it to you quickly, go and die. You know why? Since Elijah prayed and said there shall be no rain, There shall be no dew until I say so. 
and there was no rain, there was no dew. Ahab had not repented. Ahab had become aggressive. Ahab had raised such parties everywhere. He had put a price tag on Elijah. And said, anywhere you see Elijah, bring him dead or alive. We will pay you this much if you can bring that man here. And everywhere policemen have been mobilized. His photograph had been put everywhere. Wanted, wanted Elijah the Tishbite. The troubler of Israel, the man who is causing confusion. Anywhere you find him, bring him dead or alive. So for God to come and tell him, go and show yourself. It's different from what God said unto the mother and the father of Jesus. You remember when the matter of Herod was so serious in the land, God said, take the child and the mother and go to Egypt and hide yourself there. I will tell you when to come back. You remember that. And when they were to come back, the word the Lord said, go back to the land. For the one that seeketh his soul is now dead. But for this, he said, go and show yourself to Ahab. Go and take a stand, even if it means dying. That's the first thing I want to note with you. The men that God uses to bring revival, there are people that are already dead to self. They are already dead to personal safety. They are already dead to personal reputation. They are ready to take a stand even if they perish. Some of you want God to use you because you still want to make a name. You want to be popular because you want to be known. You want to preach so that thousands of people can come because you like, you like applause. But the men that bring revival, they are men that are saying, if I perish, I perish. Can you imagine what God was telling him to go and do? Go and show yourself to the man who is looking for to kill you. Go and show yourself to the man who has organized to destroy you. Go and take a stand for God. Go back and take your stand. I will send the rain. Every revival has come because somebody is standing out for God at the expense of their safety. Those of you that want to see revival in your churches, you are going to do it at the expense of your safety, at the expense of your life. But those of you that are preaching to be accepted, those of you that are preaching to be honored, those of you that are preaching so that people can clap for you, you have no business in what we are talking about. Those of you that are looking for popularity, you speak what people love to hear, you want to quickly start a church where no sinner needs to repent so that they can come dancing and shaking their body every time, you are a soothsayer. You say what suits men, not what pinches them. And yet there can be no revival unless you preach where it pinches men. Peter, he was standing against the whole crowd. And this crowd was jeering at him said, these people are drunk. He said, men, we are not drunk. The stone that you builders have rejected. You builders. These are the people that were planning to arrest them and kill them. These were people that just killed their master Jesus. And God was telling Peter, go and stand. Every revival came 
when God has found a man who can show himself even when it is dangerous. Those who are willing to take a stand even when it is a contradiction to their personal pleasure. Those who are saying, if I perish, let me perish. What am I living for again? Those who preach the truth even when it will cost them their very lives. Those who are not afraid to rock the boat because they are committed to God. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me at all? Everywhere you see God moving, it means because he has got a man who is willing not to dance along the tunes of this world. Not a man who is looking for what to eat or what to put in his pocket. Many preachers can no longer spearhead revival because their belly has become their God. When they see a big man who has money who can pay heavy tithes, their messages become like this. They are no more sharp because they are afraid of their future. Say so if I stand and I say, what will I get? Let's short measure it. Some will call you quiet and say, don't follow brother Billy. You don't know how they are making it. Be careful. They don't want to die. They are not ready to lay it down. They are not ready to suffer, even if it means persecution. You cannot spare ahead any move for God when you are so careful about your life. Jesus said, whosoever loves his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall, shall lose his life for my sake is the one that will keep it to eternal life. All the people that Jesus called, are you hearing me? All the people that Jesus ever prepared to spearhead the Pentecost, each one of them, he said, whosoever he be of you that does not hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brothers and sisters, including his own life, he cannot be my disciple. So you can imagine when God said, go and show yourself. He was saying, go and take a stand for me. Go and confront evil in the land. Go and confront the kingdom of darkness. Go and show yourself to Ahab. When Elijah agreed to go and stand, you need to read the Bible for you to understand. He met Obadiah. Obadiah was a servant, one of the protocol officers in the palace. And Obadiah was a man who feared God. Who was in the palace, but his heart is seeking God. And Obadiah saw Elijah. And Elijah greeted him, said, Are you Obadiah? He said, Yes. Go and tell Ahab that I'm ready to show myself to him. Hey! Obadiah said, Sir, you want to kill me now. You want to kill me because the king has vowed there had been a search party all over the land looking for your head. If I go there now and I say I saw Elijah and I cannot produce him, they will kill me. Why is my life not precious in your eyes? Obadiah began to explain. He said, why? Excuse me, why do you want to finish me now? Do you not know that when the king wanted to kill all the prophets of the Lord, I was the one who hid them and I was giving them food. And you now want to kill me. Because I know if I go now, very soon the Spirit of the Lord will take you somewhere. And we'll be looking for you everywhere. Nobody will know where the Spirit of God is keeping you. You are such a strange man. There is nowhere we did not go in the whole territory of Israel. Nobody could find you. And you just walk out here now. And you are saying you are going to show yourself to Ahab. No, sir. No, sir. Don't kill me. 
Obadiah was so afraid. Because what it means is that the day we meet this man is finished. If anybody catches him before he escapes into the spirit, catch him. Nobody trusted that you can see Elijah and he will talk to you five minutes and before you close your eyes, he will not have disappeared. That was the fear that gripped everybody. Say that man. <laughs> so God said, go now. Hand yourself over. What a risk. Let me ask you, who is going to take a risk for Jesus in this class? Let me see your hand. Are there people who sincerely say, Lord, if revival is a risk, I'm ready to take it. If preaching the truth means it may cost me my job, I'm ready to go for it. If standing for Jesus Christ meant I will be a castaway, no problem. Are there people like that in this class this night? Or you are just people who would like to sing? We are waiting, we are waiting. That's what you know how to sing. When God said, go and show yourself. Even to your family alone. Go and face your father, who is a member of the secret court, and say, Papa, I'm standing here to declare to you that God is doing a new thing. If you don't repent, it will not be good. And come and see what God was going to do. But because you are general cowards, general cowards, they shout in fellowship. They are mute in their offices. They are loud, shouting hallelujah here where there is no challenge. But out there, they hide the New Testament in their pockets. Go and show yourself what it means for Elijah. It's not a simple thing. So when Elijah was stepping out, going to face Ahab, he had already counted the costs. I want to show you quickly because that's an important aspect of this instruction tonight. Go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. Every move of God is because someone decided to stand for God where all others are running away. As soon as Obadiah went and told Elijah, I mean the Ahab, and said, Sir, I met Elijah, and the man said, He will show himself to you tomorrow. Ahab said, Are you sure? If we gather and we didn't see him, you know your head is going. Obadiah said, I also begged him not to, not to cut my head short. So when the time came, look at Elijah. He walked as a dead man. Not knowing what will happen to him except that he trusted God. Hallelujah. And for you to know that it's not a peaceful meeting. As he was coming, look at the first word that, that, that uh, what is that man's name? Ahab began to speak. Can you read it? Can you read it? It has said in verse 5 unto Badiah, go into the land, unto all fountains of water, unto all brooks, peradventure we may find grass to save the horses and moods alive, that we lose not all the beasts. And as Obadiah was in the way, behold, Elijah met him, verse 7. And he knew him and fell on his face and said, Are you that my Lord Elijah? And he answered him and said, I am. Go tell your Lord. Behold, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that thou wouldest deliver thy servant to the hand of Ahab to slay me? Eh, Baba? And as the Lord thy God liveth, there is no nation or kingdom where my Lord has not sent to seek you. And when they said he is not there, he took an oath of the kingdom and nation that they found you not. And now you say, go tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here. And it shall come to pass as soon as I am gone 
from you that the Spirit of the Lord shall carry you where I don't know. Eh? And so when I come and tell him, and he cannot find you, he shall slay me. But I, your servant, I fear the Lord from my youth. Was he not told you that I did what I did when Jezebel slew the prophets of the Lord? How I hid an hundred men of the Lord prophets by fifty in a cave and fed them with bread and water. Were you not told? Eh? Eh? Baba Elijah, you want to finish me? And now thou says, go, tell your Lord, behold, Elijah is here and he will slay me. Elijah said, as the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, I will surely show myself unto him today. You know what it means? I will die if it needs to be death. As the Lord liveth, I will surely, I'm going to stand. How many of you will surely preach the truth when you are threatened? How many of you will take a stand when everything seems contrary? How many of you will leave this meeting and say, now God said, go and show yourself, go and take a stand. Can you imagine that in, in, in primary schools, they are saying, don't pray. Don't preach. Don't talk to anybody. Because you want to be in that school collecting how much. You kept your mouth shut. You wouldn't pray there. You won't be like Daniel. When they told him not to pray for only 30 days, the man said, me? Not to pray to God for 30 days? For what? Even if I'm going to be thrown to the den of lion, let it be so. All the men that God used to turn things around in their generation, they were people that were willing to show themselves even at the point of death. Am I communicating with somebody here tonight? I will surely show myself to him today. So by the time Obadiah went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. Look at the first discussion. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Are you he? Are you he that troubles Israel? Look at that. Are you the rebel that we have been looking for? You are the one that put the whole nation into jeopardy. You are the one that caused confusion for everybody. You. You look at the confrontation, but look at the man of God. Did you hear him said? And he answered, I have not troubled this trip, but you, you and your father's house. You, you and your father's house. Your father Omiri. Eh? Your father Omiri. And yourself. And the wife that you went and carried from the country of Sidon. You, in that you have forsaken the commandment of the Lord and you have followed Balim. Now, therefore, gather, send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the group, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. Go and bring them here. And let's settle the issue of Mount Carmel. One man against a whole nation. How can one man stand and say, bring me 800 prophets and gather all Israel and all your cabinet, everybody that is important, bring them together. We are meeting on Mount Carmel. All of you gather. Ha! Huh? What if all of them jump on him and they tore him apart? What is he going to do? Men who brought revival. They did not fear majority who are compromisers. Men whom God used to affect their generation. They did not fear political positions. They were ready to stand. If I die, I die. What am I living for again? It's better to die serving God than to live a compromiser. Go! And show yourself to Ahab. 
Now you might wonder why I'm spending time on that tonight. It is because when it is time when God says, Arise and shine. It is not you that will do the job. But God needs a man to stand for him so that he can walk. It is not you that will change souls. But God needed someone to take a stand and declare the word of God so that God can confirm the word with signs and wonders following. It is not you that will bring the rain. God said, I will send the rain upon the earth. But you need to go and show yourself. Somebody will have said, isn't it possible for God to have sent the rain without me going to stand there? Do I need to speak before God can walk? If God wants to move, can he just move? So I hear some of you praying that dumb prayer, dumb prayer. Father, Father, oh God, come down, come down, manifest your power. Come down, come down, manifest your power. That's a wonderful prayer to you. But God doesn't come down on trees. God doesn't come down to manifest his power on dogs. God needs a man who is ready to say, if I perish, I perish. I will stand for God. Do you know that the famine in the land of Israel was so much in the days of Elisha? And everybody will have perished. They were already selling their children for lepers. They said, why sit we here till we die? Let's go and put ourselves into the camp of the enemy. If they kill us, let them kill us. When those four lepers decided to go and die, so to say, God found an army through whom he could manifest his power. Even if you are a leper here. Because I don't know how four lepers who had no toe, no fingers, how four of them could be moving. And the Bible said, the sound of their feet was like a horse, a mighty army, and the Syrian camp were armed. They began to hear the hosts, and they were saying, Hey! The host of Israel is coming. And before you know it, heaven terrified all of them. And they began to run for their dear lives. They left everything. They left their food. They left their house. They left everything. And they were running for their lives. I said, what was pushing them? Because God got four lepers who are willing to take their lives in their hand to go and show themselves. Time has come for God to move and the Holy Spirit is beginning to speak to some of you. Go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. Some of you are hearing quietly in your heart. Go and show yourself in the village. Go and take a stand in the church. Go and stand out there. And the words of life that I put in your mouth, go and preach it. I will send the rain. Go and take a stand among the teachers in your school. I will send fire. So, sir, but if I lose my job, and so what? What are you doing with the job? Are you living for job? Ah, what will I eat? What will I eat? Did you come to ask me, what am I eating? Have I died? And if we die, what's the problem? I'm asking you a question. If you die, what's the problem? You are not answering me again. I'm asking a question. If you die, what's the problem? Are you not going to heaven? No answer. Because here are people that want, they don't want to die. They are clinging. They are clinging to life. And yet they say they love Jesus. They would rather compromise to keep living. They would rather keep quiet when the devil shouts and says, Who is there? 
And then come inside to a corner here and say, Father, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. God say, where? What kind of love did you love me? That I told you to take a stand, you kept quiet. Do you know that some of you, the man that is your employer is a terrible womanizer. And you saw how many wives, how many women he has destroyed. But because you want to keep your job, you kept quiet. He said, no concern me, no concern me. Who does he concern? Let me ask you. When John the Baptist went and confronted Herod, that it should not, it was not correct for him to marry Herodias, the wife of Philip. Let me ask you, does he concern him? Talk to me. I need you to talk to me. Is Herodias, I mean Philip, is he a relative of Brother John? And is Herodias, the wife of Philip, is he not the wife of Philip, the junior brother of Herod? If a senior brother is taking his junior brother's wife, waiting concern me. It's a family problem, you will say. But for John the Baptist, any form of unrighteousness anywhere concerns him. He went and stood there and said, Herod, even though you are a king here, you are the governor, that you are a governor does not mean you can do anything you like. It was not correct for you to take your junior brother's wife. Why the man is still alive? And over my dead body, will I see you marry her? Ah! Cowards will say, John, what concerns you? You should keep on preaching your message in the wilderness. What concerns you about that? Eh? You want to put your life on the line when you should have been preaching to other thousands. John the Baptist did not think like that. And so John the Baptist, anytime he stand up, Herod sees him, he says, fire in his face. Herodias couldn't face him. He said, that's the man that will not allow this man to marry me. How many of you are a terror to Satan? How many of you, because of what you are preaching, girls don't like you again? He said, because of him that this man has dropped me. When I was in the college teaching, I thought it was my responsibility to make sure that unrighteousness does not go on in that college. Hey! When I see a lecturer, senior lecturer, senior, they are more senior than me. When I see them locking around small girls, our students, I would deliberately drive my machine. I'll go near there. I'll greet the man. I'll call him by his name. Ah, uh-uh. ah. Uh, sir, good evening, sir. What are you doing here? And so that the, the man we know, I'll call the girl, sir, young girl, is this, is this the library where you should be reading? Eh? Don't you know that this is not the kind of time you should be talking to senior principal? You go, go back to your class now. Go back to your class now. The senior principal lecturer cannot do anything because what he's doing is not correct. What he was saying to the young guest should not be said. And the guest said, excuse me, I need to quickly go actually. I need to go now. And the guest will go. And the man will look at me like this with a bad eye. If my promotion depended on them, I would never be promoted. So when we meet in the, in the meeting, ha, ah, the man will stand up and say, uh, some people are causing confusion in this college. <laughs> I'm sitting down to know who are some people, such people. I'm not, I'm not some people. I'm Mr. Akani, you know. That's my name. I'm not some people. So I'm not afraid. Until you call me by my name, then I know you are talking to me. Some people are causing confusion in this college. Ah, God. Those kind of people that are causing confusion. And what are they doing, sir?
One day I met him on the right grade and said, don't greet me, don't greet me. You are scattering things in this place. I say, like what? You don't understand. If you want to see the move of God, you should be ready to put your life on the line. And I remember one of those occasions. They had organized a birthday party. These big men, they are doing birthday party for another big man. And they called these young girls, beautiful girls. And the birthday party will start at 9 p.m. You know what they are planning. And the girls have been reaching them. I say, you, those men, you can see that their children are far older than you. If you make a mistake to be pregnant for them, the children will chase you out. And this man is likely to die before your, your baby will be up to five years. You'll be a widow. And the children, the senior children who are older than you, cannot allow you to sit down there. You are wasting your time. They say, what do I do, sir? What do I do? They say, yes. They invited you for that uh, birthday tonight. They say, yes. They say, okay. I want you to go, but go with some traps. You are going to scatter that birthday tonight. They say, how can we do that? I say, okay. <laughs> so when the guests got there, everything was set. And then one of them said, he has something, she has something to say before we continue. They said, yes, young lady, yeah, we need to hear you. So the guest stood up and said, in honor of our principal who is doing his birthday today, I want to make a short comment. He who is born once will die twice. <laughs> but if you are born twice, you will only die once and you will live forever. Why we celebrate the birthday of our principal, but I need to ask you, are you born again? Have you had the second bath? To celebrate the only first bath without a second bath is to prepare to die twice. I suggest that before we continue this birthday party, let's settle this question. Are you born again? Hey! Hey! The whole thing became violent. Say, what is all this? What is all this? You want to spoil our joy? When the argument was so much, they pushed the guests out. They gave them a leave to come. The guests trekked back. (laughs) They trekked back. And as soon as they were trekking out, I was somewhere. I said, how did it work? They said, sir, (laughs) everything's (laughs) got it. Uh-huh. If you want to see a move of God, you've got to be a radical. I knew if they were to sit on my promotion, I would not be promoted. Am I there to be promoted? My business is to save souls. One of them met me and said, you scatter things for us. I said, like what? He said, your guests, those guests that you sent, they scattered our birthday yesterday. I said, what did they do? Why did they invite them? He said, what are you, what are you talking about? I just carried my machine. <laughs> and I went away. No problem. But do you know what I discovered? They could not rest. They were they were restless because somebody shining the light. One day, the, 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 the top, the top leader of the of the college called me and said, "Mr. Akani, I've been hearing all that you have been doing." I said, "Like how, sir?" He said, "All that you have been doing, we are hearing, but don't forget that uh, you are only just a." A junior lecturer here, you need to be careful. I say, eh, what have I been doing, sir? That's a problem. Say, we are all hearing. 
But I will not let him go. I say, as a father in this place, all these young children that are yours, I thought that we are here so that these children can be brought up and so that you will be proud of each one of them. And when we see some of our colleagues going to spoil these children, shouldn't we talk? He said, well, you know, that's religious. That's religious. You know, you are not employed here for religion. You are here to teach physics. I say, it's okay. Friends, but unrighteousness could not go on. Some of those senior principal lecturers repented. And they were coming back. They said, yes, you should have. You should have told us. I said, but I've been telling you. Go! And do what? Show yourself. But now, where is the matter? That's where I need to conclude for tonight. He said, Go, show yourself unto Ahab. I will send rain upon the earth. If I stop at this point tonight, I want you to hear me. The time for the latter rain has come. The time when God wants to move is here. But those that are complacent, those that are lying down, those that are only, you know, circulating among ourselves, singing empty songs, only trying to entertain ourselves. If we call for house-to-house evangelism now, not up to 10% of those of you sitting here will come out. Abi, tell me the truth. Eh? When in those days, we went everywhere, they would throw water, dirty water. Somebody is watching, and watching, and, and as you are coming, as I told you not to come here again, on top of your body and your Bible. But we went home rejoicing. We went home dancing. So if people are talking about revival that came in the early 70s, that's how it came. Revival came because some of us were so disciplined publicly. Some of us were thrown out of churches because we would not keep quiet. We are not interested in all this band that you are doing now. That's not what matters. What matters is how to preach the word of God, how to confront sinners, how to walk up to that big man in the office and say, excuse me, have you met Jesus, your Lord and Savior, sir? Go and show yourself. I will send the rain upon the earth. As I come to the conclusion of this tonight, I am seeing God saying, do one thing, I will do the rest. Do the little bit you can do and you can stand, you can go and show yourself. I will give the rain. Brother Elijah knew the implication of that. He knew that the implication of going to show himself is to go and confront sin. To take his life in his hand. So when he, he told Ahab, Ahab went and gathered all those demonic powers. 850 prophets. Can you imagine 850 people who are coming with different different incantations and charms on their neck and doing like this, 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 moving up and down with the backing of Jezebel. Can you imagine what I'm talking about? These are people that have been sponsored right from the government house. They came in their regalias. Some, in order to make themselves fearful, they have painted their eyes here red. And they are coming in. And they are coming in. And Elijah won against the majority. 
one man. Just one man. There were not even a congregation that stood by him. All the other prophets that they were all in hiding. None of them could come out. So when he said, Hallelujah! Nobody was there to say, Amen. And he stood up there and said, Yes, today we will settle an issue. I want all the prophets of Ba to gather here. And I want all the prophets of the group to join them. If Baal is God, call on him right now. The God that sent fire, it let him be God. And the people took it serious. From morning to 6 p.m. They were yelling, they were cutting themselves, they were shouting, they were doing all kinds of things. God decided to disgrace Baal that day. Because they found a man who can show himself. And the Bible said, when they have done all, he will stand and said, maybe he's making a meeting somewhere. Call him. Maybe he's sleeping. Wake him up. Maybe he has traveled. He will come back. Let's wait for him. If it's God, call him. They did and did and did and did and did. No way. That's okay. Can I call my God? And he stood up there. Say, Father, so that these people may know that you are the one who sent me. Let the fire fall. It is God who will back up any man who dares to stand for him. I will send rain upon the earth. Go and show yourself. That night, that day. I'm just looking at one man. One man for God. When it happened, all the people of Israel in one day, they all stood up and bowed their face. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. I told you, even if you, if God keeps you in hiding for years, the day will manifest you. What God will do when God is ready to walk will baffle us. What we have done for 30 years, God can do it in three months. When it is time. That's why for me, spending time to stay before God, spending time to prepare your life, spending time to dig your root, is not a waste. I said, John the Baptist was there for 30 years. But for six months, it turned the whole land upside down. Jesus stood there for 30 years. But for three years, he did what the whole world cannot obtain. This night, I saw the boldness of God in Elijah. He alone, he gathered all of them. When everything finished, let say, all of you, let nobody among these priests and prophets of Baal escape. Each one of them. Arrest them here now and slaughter them here. Ah! How could one man against majority slaughter 850 prophets? Their blood was gushing. The children of Israel were doing it because there's a power that has descended upon Elijah. Go and show yourself. Tomorrow I will take it from there. I will then go from there. Before he could announce and say there's a sound of abundance of rain, he has stood for God. I have to stop here tonight and ask, who will stand for God? There's a song we used to sing. Who is on the Lord's side? There are several songs in our hymn book that said, Dare to be a, a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. The only thing that brought Babylon down was because one Daniel is willing to say, If I perish, I perish. 
three Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three brothers, against the whole nation, they were willing to say, we will not bow. We can burn, you can burn us alive, but we will not bow. And because they are willing to show themselves for God, Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face. I sense that we are coming to that point where God is saying, go and show yourself. Go and take a stand for me. What to do when we come back tomorrow will begin to deal with the sand of abundance of rain. But that sound of abundance of rain becomes more and more loud when God begins to get men. We are not just empty talkers. We are saying, I will stand for God. And if that means dying, I'm ready to die for him. If that means losing my business, it doesn't matter. If it means rocking the boat of Business people that are doing evil in the market, I'm ready to do it. Even if they will stone me to death, no problem. Men like, like Stephen, they were stoned to death because they dared to stand for God. Go and show yourself. And I will send the rain upon the earth. If to say, he said, go and show yourself and try to bring rain, that would have been a difficult matter. But God is saying, I, I will do it. I will send rain upon the earth. All you need to do is to go and show yourself. I will confirm my word behind you. Did God do it? Eh? Did God disgrace Elijah? Did God disappoint Daniel? Please talk to me. Even though they beheaded John the Baptist. Was John the Baptist a failure? Can you imagine the thousands and thousands of people that John the Baptist brought to the Lord? And now Jesus gave a great commendation upon his life, even though they cut his head. It doesn't matter. You know what touches me is that Elijah went to heaven by the chariot of fire. Elijah went to heaven by death, by, by a sickness. John the Baptist went to heaven when they cut his head. All that matter is that they all went to heaven. Whether you take train or you take a, a flight or you take a boat or you take a turo turo, it's all a transport. Whatever carries me to heaven is, is, is not the issue. Destination is more important than the transportation. Eh? Did you hear me? I say your destination is more important than the transportation. They went to heaven. William Tyndale. How many of you have read about William Tyndale before? The man that translated the Bible into English. By which many of us are now saved. Because we now can read the Bible in English. The man that did it. He did it in jeopardy to his life. Nobody could read Bible. Because the Bible was only in Latin. So William Tinde decided, let him go and study Latin. After he finished having his first degree in English. He spent years studying Latin. He was a first class student. But the only reason why he's learning those languages was so that he can translate the Bible. And he did not only study English and Latin, he decided to study Greek and Hebrew so that he can translate the Bible. And then it was against the law for anybody to read the Bible in any other language apart from Latin. And he started first by translating the, the Gospel of John. He would write it with long hand. And he's distributing a portion of it. And people were getting touched. By the time he finished New Testament, William Tinde had been declared wanted all over Europe. He must be brought dead or alive. It was terrible. 
They didn't find him all over England. You know where they went and discovered it? They went and found him in Antwerp, where you call Belgium today. And they gathered him, bound, and brought him back. Not for doing anything, but for translating the Bible into English. And they tied him to the stake and set him on fire. He was roasted alive. And as that brother was dying, he said, Lord, open the eyes of the king of England. Open his eyes. It was many years after that the Bible that this man translated didn't die. People went on reading and they discovered that it is the best English literature that they could ever found. That's when King James ordered that the Bible must be published. That's why you have what you call King James Bible. William labored. I don't know how many thousands and millions of people have gone to glory, to heaven, because they read the Bible. All of you here, you are indebted to that man's labor. What are you doing for your own generation? Do you think clapping hands is what brings revival? I'm talking to you. Do you think this lazy man, uh, Christianity, is what will bring revival? What is it about you that you so cherish that you cannot lay it down for the Lord? All those who advance the move of God in their generation, only one thing is common with them. They were all sold out to die for the Savior. This night, I'm hearing God saying, Go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. And as you join me in prayer tonight, I will just leave a word who is on the Lord's side. Who for him will go? We are going to translate this meeting that we have been having for these years. We must translate it into action. Who will go for God? Who will say, Lord, here am I. If I perish, I perish. When you look at various places where the fire of revival ever burned, it's because some lives were willing to be sacrificed on the altar for it. Who will go and show himself? Who will stand and say, Lord, here am I. I have cherished my life for too long. I want to lay it down. I have been looking at this, my life, for too long. I want to make it an offering. I have been protecting myself for too long. Lord, I want to sow it. I want to sow my life. And see what can come out of it. I have been too afraid of dying for too long. And yet something will kill you. Let me ask you. If you don't die for God. You will die for something else. And possibly for something useless. I want to stand here tonight. And I want to declare to you. God is saying. Who will take a stand for me? Who will go for us? We stop only speaking in the mouth, but who will put action to the word of God? As we go to God in prayer tonight, we just have a few, maybe about five minutes to do a prayer before we release you because time is not on our side. So I'm not going to be calling, 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 calling if you're on the Lord's side. And if you have heard the word of God, say, go and take a stand for me. Go and stand for me. We don't know what God can do. I will send the rain. God can send the rain even in a small secondary school because you are taking a stand for God there. Fire can break forth in your, in your, in your factory because you are taking a stand for God there. God can turn your local church around because you decided no longer to keep quiet but to stand for the truth. 
God can change the whole of your denomination because somebody is saying, Lord, I'm ready to be sacrificed to see revival in the midst of my people. I'm finished with selfishness. I'm finished with personal pursuits. I'm finished. I'm finished with all of that. I want to see you move in our village. Is anybody going to lay down his life for your tribe and say, God, let me go from village to village and see what God can do. Stop making big noise. Stop shouting. Go to where lives or men are waiting to be helped. I ask you tonight, who will go and show himself? Go and show yourself to Ahab. I will send the rain. If you will, join me to pray. I will simply say to God tonight, Yarama, use me. Yarama, use me. As the Lord needs somebody. Yarama, use me. Let's rise to pray together. And if in your heart you are saying, God, here am I. Here am I. We celebrate Elijah. We talk about what they did. But we never look at the sacrifice. Say so he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. He put his face between his knees, crying. He took life on his hand to go and confront Ahab. You wonder, he was not afraid that they may arrest him. And when it was time to go and show himself, he was ready to face a whole nation, even if they would kill him. Who is saying to God, here am I. Enough of plucking flowers. Let my life count for you. We sing that song only two, three times. Just three times. And if you are saying, Lord, let's stop playing about. I want to respond to you. I want to obey you. I want to take you seriously. I want to respond to your word in my heart. Go and show yourself. You are hearing. Maybe not everybody is hearing me, but God is causing you to hear his voice. Go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. Go out of here. Go to the village. Go and show yourself to that Ahab. As we sing this song just three times, I'll give you liberty to respond to God. Whether you are standing there, you are raising up your own hand and say, God, here am I. Or you are walking out to the altar to say, God, let's set it today. Let me burn this bridge. We have talked about this thing for too long. When we finish meeting like this, your body will shake, 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 but you'll return to doing the same old thing. You are saying tonight, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Use me. As the Lord needs somebody. Yarama, use me. We have only two more times to sing this song. If you are lifting up your hand, or you are walking out here, do it very briskly. Do it as someone who has heard the word. You are not coming out as a mere routine. You are saying, God, those who became anything for God, they put their lives on the line. Yarama, Yarama, oh, as the Lord needs somebody. Before we take the last time, if you want to come out, do it now. 
If you are raising up your right hand, say, God, this is not the first time I'm hearing you saying, go and take a stand. Go and take your stand for me. I have had this again and again. I don't know why I'm a coward. I don't know why. What am I looking at? It's making my life. And you're growing. You're growing old. Even the money you thought you are making. Where is it? We have talked about Boko Haram boys. They are willing to die for nothing. They are holding everybody to ransom because few of them decided that if I perish, I perish. But for the church, like Rubenites, you are always doing many considerations, calculations in the heart. We do the song finally. And if the Lord is demanding on your life tonight and say, go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. You might lift up your hand there or you might just walk down here straight and say, God, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Let's do it the last time. The last time. After this last time, I will just be praying. I will just talk to God. Here am I. Use me. Here am I. Absolutely somebody. It's not Jesus. Urobush Kedarabakutu Shandarabakutu Robos Kedarabash. Unto Robos Kambaramash. Imbarabashanta Robos Ked. Robos Kambarobos. Are you laying your hand before God tonight? Are you raising the right hand and say, God? Lord, please do something beyond here. Some of you are saying, When will I burn the bridge? This is the time to do it. If you raise your right hand, raise it well above your head because I'm praying. If you feel like running out, run out. If you need to put action to your decision tonight, do it. But lift those hands before God while you are coming, if you are coming. But if you feel like, let me just stand and decide for God, do it. But tonight is a night that God is saying, Go and show yourself. Go and take a stand. Arise and shine for your light has come. To keep contemplating inside the tent is not right. Revival comes only when God gets men who are willing to become a sacrifice. God bless you. If you are running here, do so. If you are at the back and the Spirit of God is saying yes, raising your right hand is not enough. Run out. Do it. Do it quickly. We have a few minutes to pray together. Thank you. Thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you. As the Lord needs somebody. Yarama, use me. Yarama, touch me. Yarama, oh Lord, as the Lord is somebody. Yarama. Use me.
In Jesus' name we are praying. Take note tonight that if that life is not given to God, something else will take it. If that life does not count for God, I wonder what it will count for. If you are standing and you are raising the hand, raise it above your head. If you are outside here, raise up the hand above the head. You are saying, God, I'm hearing you tonight. No man having lighting a, a lamp, keep it under the bushel. Every bushel that is hiding my life, break it tonight. Break it tonight. Set my life ablaze tonight. Set my life on fire. Set me on fire tonight. This night, oh God, set my heart on fire. Everything that is holding my life down from being used of you, from being involved in that which matters, break it tonight in the name of Jesus. What is it? Is it the fear of death? Is it the fear of men? Is it the fear of the future? Father, break every fear tonight. Lord, I've been asking you, let there be another Elijah. Let there be another Elijah. Make me that Elijah. Make me a man who stands for you tonight. Rema Sondo Yorobos. Embariala Basanda. Mayata Kosonto Korobos. Sanda Baruda. Messia Rama Sando Korobos Kuria. Le Koria Lama Sando Korobos Kuria. Father, do something tonight. Set these men on fire. Set them ablaze. Break every yoke around their lives tonight. All those that are lifting up their hands above their heads. Everywhere we are standing tonight. And those who dare to take a stand here tonight. Father, put your hand on their lives. I am asking, oh God, cast this meeting. Cause this meeting to be a turning point. A turning point in the name of Jesus. Release this life tonight. Release them in the name of Jesus. Let the fire fall upon their lives. Let the fire fall in the name of Jesus. Let the fire, the kind of fire that came on Elijah. That he could not sit down again. He could not keep quiet again. Let the fire fall in the name of Jesus. Set these lives ablaze now. Set them on fire tonight. Set them on fire tonight. What you did to Daniel. What came on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? That they could no longer keep quiet. They took their stand. Until Babylon, as great as it was, collapsed. Release the fire tonight. Lord, you remember what you did to Peter. Peter was a coward. Peter was denying you before a small girl. But when you came on his life, he was ready to die. He was ready to confront the senate of the people and say, Yes, ye men, judge whether it is correct for us to fear you and obey you and, to, and disobey God. Nobody could stop them again. Father said these people are blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, hear tonight. Hear tonight. Hear tonight. Hear tonight, O oh God. Hear in this night, in this meeting. Hear every veil in our hearts. Thank you, Father. 
from this night, oh God, something must happen here. Spirit of the living God, begin to do your work. Keep moving in this place. Keep breaking forth in this place. Keep releasing hearts here. Mashato Roboskuri. Santa Makondo Roboshiri. Take this life, Lord. We lay it at your feet. Go and show yourself. That's what you are saying tonight. Go and take a stand. I will send the rain. I will send the rain. Lord, you say you will send the rain. Send the rain, O God. Thank you for hearing us. Lord, as you are breaking forth in this meeting tonight, it shall be an unstoppable fire. Unquenchable fire. Unquenchable revival. Nobody will stop you from going again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Kanto Kushiba. Intakoski Lebush. Mato Kuribu Santa Rabashi. Send the fire out. Send this light out in schools, on farms, in villages. Let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. Lord, let the fire fall. Among women, let the fire fall. In the choirs of churches, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. In schools, let the fire fall. In the market, let the fire fall. Lord, I'm asking you today, let the fire fall. Cause your fire to break forth now. Do more than what we could imagine or think from this meeting. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we put our hands in your hand tonight. This is not going to end again. It's an unstoppable fire. 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 From this night, oh God. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. With those hands straight to heaven. Just say, Lord, I'm putting this hand in your hand. If I perish, I perish. Let your will be done. Let the fire fall. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we stretch forth our hands to you tonight. What you are doing tonight, nothing will stop it again. Nothing will stop it again, oh God. This will jump into families, it will jump into houses, it will jump into places until it becomes an unstoppable fire. But Lord, I remind you, you say, I will send the rain. Send the rain, oh God. In Jesus Christ's name we have prayed. For further inquiries on this and other messages, please contact Refuge Media, number 19 Mayera Street, Navit Plaza, opposite Zedka Model Schools, Narai High Cost, Barnawa. Telephone numbers 0703-456-8035 or 0805-8035.
8455719. Email reciousteal at yahoo.com. Website www.theplaceofrefuge.org. May your heart find help as you listen in Jesus' name.